what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will discuss something very important good bad good bad good bad placements planets okay so recently i was asked a question that why is astrology so complex there is this there is that so many things to see how to see what's happening how to understand what's the ultimate reality yes so why is it so complex why is it so difficult there are so many things to know so we will see how to approach these problems or is it a problem at all to be approached all right so if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description and before beginning as i say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and somebody said that please be loud so i'll be loud from now <laughs> okay so now there was a question asked that why is astrology so complex yes sometimes we see this planet is sitting there it is in a good house but in a bad sign sometimes it is in a bad house but it is exalted yes so then what to do how to interpret how how to know is it going good or is it going bad well the the answer is very simple astrology is nothing but a map of our life and life is complex yes so for example there are many people who can have an exalted venus placed in the 6th house or the 8th house or the 12th house for example or they may have it in the 5th house or the 9th house or they may have it uh, anywhere but the 7th house can have malefics as i had asked this question to james braha sir that if suppose venus is well placed and the 7th house has a malefic or the 7th lord is in a bad shape well then what then he said they will have problems in some areas and they will be good at some places so the answer is very simple why astrology is so complex because life is complex in general yes and many a times we see that mercury and venus planets yes planets like mercury and venus because they are close to the sun they are combust venus not very frequent but mercury is often combust and what does mercury venus represent in general they represent our marriage yes mercury represents our finances venus marriage relationship so we will always see that mostly in general people have troubles in these two areas everybody has some problem or the other in marriage yes and everybody has some problem or the other in his finances or how to manage the finances what to do income and all all, all this all those problems can be there if these two planets are combust and it happens uh, many times that although venus goes uh, retrograde uh, once in 18 months but still uh, it may not be combust like uh, mercury but still it is combust many of the times we see in the charts so the point is sometimes some planet will be in the kendra for example so which means that planet is a planet where we naturally will be working on yes so for example if venus is placed in the kendra or suppose venus is placed in the 10th house then venusian things can give the person rise in status yes name fame authority power position but if it is in a bad sign then it can happen that the person is facing difficulties when that person is doing that but because it is in the 10th house which is itself a very strong house the strongest house of the chart so even if there are difficulties but that planet will still give gains to the person yes 10th house 11th house these kind of houses so life is very complex so you will never see suppose let me give you an example suppose venus is in a 10th house and suppose it is in a relatively good sign okay suppose it's in own sign like taurus or libra suppose for example in the 10th house so then it can happen that the it can happen i am not saying it will happen for anybody there are millions of people who have venus in the 10th and not everybody is into fashion or modeling or all these things but i'm just saying forget the other planets just think that the person is doing some business or marketing or something related to venus yes but even then there are so many people who have problems in that yes i know people who are struggling as actresses yes or i know people who are struggling to get their business of garments and all these things to put it out so just because you have a planet there it doesn't mean it it is going to be uh, free of any problems because there can be some malefic which is smashing that planet from somewhere yes smashing aspecting <laughs> so that planet will put some sorrow some pain or some 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 problem that malefic may do if rahu is aspecting that can, that can put doubts or that can explode it like a bomb yes so it always happens that somewhere in some house in some chart 
the malefics will be aspecting which means you will never find that in a chart that moon is not afflicted or if moon is afflict moon is not afflicted you will see there is a malefic in the fourth house or you will see that the fourth lord has been aspected by a malefic or it is conjunct or it is in a dustana or it is in a uh, difficult in a difficult sign like in the sign of debility so it is impossible to find the chart where that house doesn't have a malefic the ruler is not aspected by malefic the house is not aspected by malefic yes or the karaka for that house so for example first house surya is the karak primarily so you will never find a chart where sun is not afflicted or the first house is not afflicted or there is no malefic in the first house because you will never find a person who is totally strong yes that only one person can be who is that lord ram himself yes that is why he is known as maryada purushottam so because you will never find a person like that yes only because of that you will never find any horoscope which has a perfect lagna or the lagna lord or the karaka for the first house which is sun so you will never find that yes so now what happens is when we try to give blanket statements like when i asked james brasser that oh is this planet good in this house then he said you cannot make blanket statements with astrology which means that you cannot decide by just one thing because remember astrology is like a round table conference there are not one person there are 10 people yes so as vic dikara said that if 12th lord is in the 5th and venus and the other things are good then we can say that this person may have an affair with a foreigner but suppose if venus or the other planets are not good then it can happen that the lord of losses is coming in the 5th house yes if you have not watched that video with vic dikara then go and watch it he says this in that so uh, we have to stop interpreting things as good and bad yes because see there are these questions which come up my venus is here it is with this planet is it good or is it bad so suppose let me give an example jupiter the karaka for children spirituality etc yes it is sitting with saturn suppose it is conjunct a malefic but what if it is sitting in cancer then what do you say oh good plus bad equal to zero so jupiter is not functioning or what is it <laughs> or you say that no jupiter depends on which house it is suppose it is in the 7th house where saturn is in digbal for a capricorn ascendant then what do you say suppose it is in the cancer uh, uh, it is in the first house for a cancer lagna yes so then what do you say yes because then jupiter is having directional strength in the first house then you will say oh saturn is not strong that means plus is more than minus astrology is not binary plus minus minus plus <laughs> this system doesn't work here which means that because our life is not like that you will never find any planet which is perfectly placed or the house of which it is the kara because no aspect of our life is perfect have you ever seen anybody with a perfect marriage i am not talking of facebook and instagram here in reality yes you will never ever find because you will always find there is some problem or the other yes either they are fighting or they are quarreling or some one of them is cheating on somebody else or whatever it is or they are not speaking the truth or they don't like each other or or maybe one of them dies yes because you will never find a chart where venus is perfectly placed as per house and sign unafflicted by any other malefic and the seventh house seventh lord is also unafflicted seventh house seventh lord is also in a good dignity you will never find that so that is why i am saying that astrology is complex because life is complex so these problems arise when we try to interpret things as good or bad yes so venus in the fifth house i have seen people asking oh is it good or bad you can't ask like that it can be good for something it can be bad for something else as uh, one of my gurus he always says that any planet in a particular house he will always give something good and something bad pertaining to that house or pertaining to that planet yes so for example if suppose venus is in the 6th house then it is it may not be very good for uh, things like marriage or relationships may not be if the other combinations are supporting but we see that uh, the 
ex-president of USA, Barack Obama. He has Venus in Gemini in the sixth house. Yes, he's a Capricorn ascendant. But his marriage is perfectly fine. Why? Now you will say, oh, this this planet is here, this planet is there. And that's very true because one planet does not decide what is going to happen. So when you are asking uh, things like, oh, is Jupiter in the fourth house good or bad? The question is good good and bad for what? That That is a question which is to be asked because Jupiter in the fourth can be fabulous for something else. The person can have a very pure heart because fourth house is your heart and Jupiter is the most... Uh, He's a very sattvic planet. So when Jupiter is there in the fourth heart, you can have an extremely clean heart. But what if Rahu is sitting there? <laughs> That's confusing, right? So it can happen that that person, naturally, depending on the sign, suppose Jupiter Rahu is in Pisces in the fourth house, then it may happen that Jupiter is innately strong there and Rahu has to listen to Jupiter because Jupiter is very strong there. But sometimes when allurements come, then this person may have the tendency to escape into wrong things like drinking alcohol or watching pornography or visiting prostitutes or just sitting and eating sugar, indulging in chocolates. Yes, 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 chocolates. So that can happen. Now that doesn't mean the entire or the whole the person that totally the person is a bad person. No, it's not like that. You have to see everything. You have to see sun. You have to see moon. So when we ask these questions that oh jupiter in the 12th is good or bad now jupiter in the 12th is very good for spirituality yes and jupiter in the first is also good but what's the problem with jupiter in the first anybody <laughs> i don't know what's the problem it's in directional strength but one problem i have experienced with these people in my own personal experience yes jupiter in the first house is said to be great it's said to be the best placement yes but in my experience, I have seen the moment you try to give them some astrological technical advice, they may hit back at you. They may say, oh, but I did man that mantra already. This, this did not work. Yes. Can happen. Suppose Saturn is looking from the seventh house. Then it can happen that and if Jupiter is the ninth lord and James Ross said, if the ninth house is afflicted of that person, you will have a difficult time giving consultation to a person because the blessings of the gods are denied when the ninth house is afflicted or the ninth lord is afflicted or whatever you call it. Yes, or Jupiter is in a bad shape. So if Jupiter is in the Lagna and aspected by Saturn, then although the person has Jupiter in the first house, but that Saturn's aspect will create some problem. Yes. So the answer is very simple. Life is very complex. So even if that person can be very good, but he may feel that because Jupiter is in the first house, he believes God very much or he can be very spiritual. But because Saturn is aspecting, he may he may at times feel, oh, this is not good enough. My guru is not good enough. I need to change my guru. Yes, that can happen. So, or it can happen that Rahu is in the ninth house. Then what do you say? He will be an atheist. He will not follow religion. Suppose Jupiter is exalted in Cancer in the first house. And if Rahu is there in the ninth house, what do you say then? Because Rahu in the ninth, people sometimes they don't follow religion or they break customs, break traditions. Then what will you say? Well, then you see where is the sun placed, where is the moon placed, yes. Then you see the nakshatras, then you see you, the, you see the whole chart. By that you understand, Jupiter in the first is good or bad, yes. <laughs> and again, even if you say it is good, good for what? Is it good for finances or for spirituality? Or is it good for marriage, whatever it is. Because if Jupiter is in Cancer in the first house, it is ruling the sixth house. So when sixth Lord aspects the seventh house, because from the first house, Jupiter will aspect the seventh house. Maybe it's not that great for marriage. Yes, sixth Lord aspecting the seventh house is not very good for marriage. So now if Jupiter for a Cancer ascendant sits in the exaltation in the first house in Digbala, house and sign both ways is very powerful. So maybe it can give you some challenges in marriage. Yes, as a lesson, of course. <laughs> yes. Or, but then you have to see Venus. If Venus is very well placed, that challenge may not be there. Yes. But if Venus is also badly placed, then you may conclude that Jupiter for me in this chart for a Cancer Ascendant is not good in the first house for marriage. Because it is also the ninth Lord. So ninth Lord being Digbala. 
his fabulous for spirituality ninth lord aspect in the seventh house is fabulous for spiritual progress after marriage but for sexuality it may create some trouble <laughs> because it's the sixth house sixth house is the house of celibacy yes so now you understand how to see you have to see the whole chart that is very 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 important because each planet represents some part of us yes so we have to undergo those dynamics sometimes ketu is present as james was said yes if ketu is conjunct mercury or venus then whenever you get suffering in that area you always try to focus your mind on the other world other realm yes so that can create some challenges yes but what if seventh house is a very good benefit then suppose if jupiter uh, and ketu are together and sorry the fifth house has a benefit well then what do you say the person will have children or good children how do you say that <laughs> yes and then there are of course divisional charts there is d9 there is d7 there is d10 so much and then there are so many people who are telling me that oh why are you not starting videos on divisional charts yes what is the meaning of the third house in the navamsha what is the meaning of the seventh house in the navamsha well i can make videos on that but the question is do you at all know what's the meaning of third house in the lagna chart yes can you write down 50 meanings of the third house in the lagna chart forget divisional charts that's the problem see we do not know how to predict from one chart now that doesn't mean you don't have to use divisional charts i am not saying that but what i am saying is first you master the basics yes first you understand how combinations work how planets work how houses and how all these things function then you go to the divisional charts if you cannot figure out what is there in the lagna chart how in the universe will you figure out what's going on there and then you mix both yes people ask oh my venus is in pisces in the navamsha and it is in virgo in uh, the d1 so what about marriage sir no we don't know right because you you have not first individually interpreted both the charts and that requires lot of practice blessings of the gurus the gods yes and our own hard work so first we have to make sure that we understand the basics first because it is very complex because life is complex so then we go to the divisional charts then we go to merging how the things happen yes just saying oh this person has jupiter in the first house this person has jupiter in the ninth so will these two people be very compatible you just superimpose the planets on each other relationship compatibility you can do that but first you have to study the individual charts first you have to understand what is going on in the person's chart only after that you can understand what's going on in the divisional charts yes because if you cannot interpret the position of a planet in any chart it can be d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 any d100 also yes <laughs> even the sasti amsha d60 but how will you predict you can't do any prediction so there is the problem so we do not focus on the basics so many people are jumping 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 yes make videos on this make videos on that do we at all know the basics so if we know the basics it's fine or if you think we know that's also okay <laughs> but if you think that you don't know even even like me i also don't know all the basics it's not possible but we need to understand the basics and that is why in the coming two months whichever guests i am inviting no high level topic no lofty topic like some very high level complex topic no nothing only basics they will only be talking of basics like james bar sir is talking of some very basic things what happens when saturn aspects the first house or the sun or the moon or the ruler of the ascendant yes the person can feel that oh i am not good enough yes see that's a such a simple thing sir is telling that can solve so many problems yes it's very simple right if the ninth lord is afflicted ninth house is afflicted such so basic things see so basics are all in all actually in astrology <laughs> so we have to make sure that we ground ourselves in the basics and then we go to high level topics because then what happens things become more and more and more and more complex as we go ahead so it is very important that we learn the basics okay and for that we have to see so many charts we have to learn from the scriptures and we also have to try to connect the different puranic stories which are there stories from the puranas yes so many things are there so many lessons are there yes 
of the nakshatras and so many things so we have to put the hard work and understand that life is complex that is why astrology is so complex okay so how to simplify it learn the basics that's the secret of becoming a good astrologer either you teach or you learn for yourself that's separate but the point is you have to know the basics properly strong basics yes and then you have to know how to combine things so when you know these two things and blessings of the guru and the gods from the sky <laughs> then we can say that yes we have successfully uh, helped this person in prediction or whatever you call it first you have to know who the person is then you predict for future if you don't know who the person is what the person wants many time people come and ask me oh which career should i do one astrologer told me become is officer another said become politician another said become doctor another said become engineer but the question is have they checked who you want to become yes so how to do that we don't know <laughs> okay so we will discuss more on these topics okay so there you go if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please 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 subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with those who are wanting to know good bad good bad placements so that is my request do not interpret things let us not do it in binary terms plus minus good bad okay it doesn't work like that because life doesn't work like that okay nothing is 100 or nothing is zero yes so there you go that is it from my side god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you understand the basics and simplify astrology and know which planet is good or bad so i'm waiting for the comments now oh is this good is this bad okay so let me see what you write in the comments okay bye bye See you.